Welcome to the Metabolic Classroom. I'm Benjamin Bickman, biomedical scientist and professor of cell biology. In today's lecture, we are uncovering the profound metabolic effects of the hormone cortisol. This is a hormone that, despite its villainization, is necessary for our survival, but it is such a consequential hormone that it might not surprise you to learn that it has some pretty relevant effects when it comes to metabolism, particularly when it is chronically elevated. There are myriad ways to classify hormones. Cortisol is a steroid hormone. That means it's synthesized from, uh, from cholesterol. It's made in the adrenal cortex. That is the outer layer of the adrenal glands, which themselves reside right on top of the kidneys. It falls into the family of a glucocorticoid. Indeed, it's the main one. As a glucocorticoid, it plays a central role in energy mobilization, immune regulation, and even circadian rhythms. Its production is governed by the hypothalamic, pituitary, and then adrenal axis. Anyone who's had any touching of endocrinology, would that would sound familiar to you. Just to say that again, there is this upper region within the brain, the hypothalamus, which then connects to the uh, pituitary gland. The hypothalamus will send a signal to the pituitary, which will then send a signal via a hormone called ACTH down to the adrenal glands. And then it's ACTH that goes from the pituitary down to the outer peel. It's like an, the adrenal gland is like an orange and it has a peel and then it has the fleshy little part of it. That peel is the adrenal cortex. That's where cortisol is being produced, again, in response to ACTH. If we were to <clears throat> assign any primary function to cortisol, it would be to ensure energy availability, particularly glucose. So cortisol is a very powerful signal in promoting glycogenolysis in the liver, which is the breaking down of glycogen into glucose. It also stimulates protein catabolism in muscle, so thereby breaking down amino acids from the muscle, but to fuel gluconeogenesis. And gluconeogenesis is the term for the liver creating new glucose from, from scratch. But cortisol also enhances lipolysis or the breakdown of fat tissue in some depots. That's a very important distinction that we'll get to in a moment. So cortisol will promote the breakdown of fat in certain locations, so thereby moving these the stored fat into the blood as free fatty acids to be used for either energy or redeposition, so storing it somewhere else. These actions are crucial during acute stress, times of fasting or danger where you need to get away from something, but chronic elevation due to prolonged stress or medications or disease lead to metabolic function. Cortisol also has a potent, potent anti-inflammatory effect. This is why synthetic glucocorticoids like prednisone, for example, are used therapeutically to help control conditions of chronic inflammation or immune activation, like, for example, autoimmune diseases. At the cellular level, cortisol binds to what's called the glucocorticoid receptors. Now, the glucocorticoid receptors are not on the surface of the cell. In the past, when I've talked about hormone like insulin coming and binding to an insulin receptor, it's something that is on the surface of the cell. The glucocorticoid receptors are deeper within the cell. They're located more, uh, well, centrally within the cytosol. But when cortisol comes and slips through the cell membrane and binds to the, the glucocorticoid receptor within the body of the cell itself, it then will translocate into the nucleus. So the glucocorticoid receptor, once bound with cortisol, will move into the nucleus and then will act as a transcription factor. So it will turn on the production or the activation of genes, of numerous genes, which of course, once you turn on the gene, you get 
eventually what will turn into a protein product or something will be produced. But some of the genes that are so important in the context of energy metabolism are ones like PEPCK, P-E-P-C-K, that stands for phosphoenolpyruvate carboxykinase. That's essential for gluconeogenesis. So that's an essential enzyme that the liver has to activate in order to start making glucose. But the glucocorticoid receptor will also increase the expression of lipoprotein lipase or LPL, which helps for lipid uptake or fat uptake into various tissues. This gene regulation underlies cortisol's very important and broad metabolic effects. But of course, if it's sustained for too long, you start to get into the realm of pathology. Problems start to happen. And again, we're going to get to some of those. Now, cortisol is one of the more potently circadian hormones. So there's quite a diurnal rhythm to it where it can really peak in the morning which is thought to just be reflective of the body needing to get some energy before it gets up and starts to get busy. And then it will generally start to decline in the afternoon to evening. If you disrupt that rhythm, like with, say, chronic stress or something, it does set the stage for some other problems. 